Okay, in this video we'll prove a formula for um, calculating phi of n given a prime factorization of n. So let's recall we have the following setup. So phi of n, Euler's totient function, is defined by the following. It's the number of positive integers between 1 and n that are relatively prime to n. Good, and then we also know that phi of a power of a prime is given as follows. So phi of p to the r is p to the r minus p to the r minus 1. And finally, we know that if we have the GC of m and n equals 1, then phi acts multiplicatively. In other words, phi of m times n is phi of m times phi of n. So that brings us to the following um, theorem, which will give us a formula for Euler's phi function. And that's the following. <clears throat> if n ha has a prime factorization given as follows, so p1 to the r1 all the way up to pk to the rk, where all of the pi's are distinct primes, then we have the following, phi of n equals n times 1 minus 1 over p1 times all the way up to 1 over 1 minus pk. Good. So although it's useful to know the complete prime factorization of n, in fact, in this formula, you actually only need to know all of the prime factors. The powers of each prime is kind of uh, wrapped up in the proof. And we'll see that we'll apply um, these second two bullet points along the proof. Okay, so let's look at it. So the proof is as follows. So it's really just a string of equations. Um, there is not much, uh, there are not really any tricky arguments to it. So we'll take phi of n, and now that's the same thing as phi of p1 to the r1 all the way up to pk to the rk. We just replaced n with uh, its uh, version with its prime factorization. And now since all of the pi's are distinct primes, they are in fact relatively prime to each other. So we can use this multiplicative property of the phi function. So that will give us phi of p1 to the r1 all the way up to phi of pk to the rk. Good. And then next, we can use uh, this formula that we proved earlier, which is the value of phi on a power of a prime. So that will give us the following, p to the r1 minus p to the r1 minus 1, all the way up to p to the rk minus p to the rk uh, minus 1. Good. Now next what we'll do is we'll factor uh, the largest power of the prime as we can from each binomial. So that will give us p to the r1 um, times uh, 1 minus 1 over p1. Oh, and I, I just realized I forgot my subscripts here, but I'll add those. So we have that. So that's from the first one. I'll go ahead and write the second one in there. Um, just so that we have it. So this would be P2 to the R2, 1 minus 1 over P2. So we have that. And then finally, all the way up to PK to the RK, 1 minus 1 over PK. Okay, great. So now it's starting to take shape. We're actually um, pretty much all done. So what we'll do now is commute all of the P's together. So that will give us P1 to the R1 all the way up to PK to the RK times the product 1 minus 1 over P1 all the way up to 1, 1 minus 1 over PK. Fantastic. And now we are essentially done because we know this product, p1 to the r1 up to pk to the rk, is equal to n because we said that n had that prime factorization. So that gives us n times 1 minus 1 over p1 all the way up to 1 minus 1 over pk. And that uh, finishes the proof. So I'll do another video um, where we do some examples of this. Um, but now we have a formula for the Euler phi function on any natural number, given its prime factorization.